Biscuits. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Beers and Biscuits, a dog cast for the rest of us. I'm Karen. And I'm Nicole. Grab a beverage, give your dog a biscuit, and enjoy the conversation. If we can get there. If we can make it through this. <laughs> uh, Karen, do you have anything that you're drinking today? I don't have anything. Nothing? No. Well, I have I have coffee filled with a lot of tears. Does that count? I think it does. <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> and doesn't that just sound like the modern day woman's drink? <laughs> oh, it does. It does. Yeah. No, I just, yep. I've, I, like I've had like the past couple of days, it's been like, I've been able to do things, but nothing to completion. And this is like the perfect example. I'm getting ready to do this and I don't even have a beverage. Nice. God, the brain. Crushing it. That's Karen's ver- <sighs> verbiage. Right? Crushing it. Crushing Absolutely it today. Crushing it today. Talking about crushing it and talking about tears. Mm. Cool. You had a bit of a... No, bit of to- a day. Today was a day. Well, first of all, let me even go back further because we did start talking about this before yes. yeah. we recorded. But let me just even go back further than that. But today was just a day like in general. Mm. Like, do you ever have those days where you're like, just stuff is just going wrong, right? Absolutely. And it's like this, this like weird feeling like, and I guess it's not really like paranoid about things, but like this weird feeling that, you know, a couple of things happen back to back. And then I'm like, oh my God, is something like really going on? So like I first got this email from um, USAA, my insurance company for my, for the car and the house. And it was like, this is con- confirming changes made to your account. And I'm like, what? Like I yeah. definitely did not make any changes and then like I got another one like two minutes later and it was like this is confirming changes made to your account but it was different changes and I'm like okay weird and then I look at like the next email and it's an email from Bank of America for our business account that's like thank you and welcome to preferred rewards and I'm like what is going on like I immediately go into like panic mode is someone stealing my identity and I'm like yeah and I'm like well wait a minute if somebody's stealing my identity why do they want to pay my insurance (laughs) bills for me (laughs) they're they're very committed yeah they're they're super nice they're super nice but so after I got over that initial like okay something's obviously going wrong you know I called them both and they were just like oh no no it was just xyz and um you know, the insurance was like, you're just up for a renewal. So those are why the changes were made. Uh, and I'm like, well, please say that in your right. email so I don't go crazy. Save me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was already a little stressful because, you know, then you got to sit on hold forever mm-hmm, and yeah. blah, 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 blah. Um, and then, of course, like the weather turned today. Mm-hmm. So it was super nice the past two days. And now it's like back to cold and rainy and dreary. And I'm just like, ugh. I was like, I'm pretty sure I moved away from Seattle. Like, why? <laughs> like, did it just follow me here? Like, I don't get it. No, you moved into a rainforest here. Right. In I know. I know, right? It was like traffic was horrible and construction was horrible. So I was already having it. Like, yeah. Totally trigger stacked for the day. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I get to my last client's house for a walk and it is a dog that we have had over the last little bit have have been having problems with um he is an an extreme resource guarder um even you know we say like oh high value items and it's not even just high value items it's things he th- thinks might be high value items or things that are close to a spot where maybe he has once before picked up a high value item. So it's like, oh, under this bush, when we're walking, I once found a chicken bone. So now anything I find under this bush, I'm going to, I'm going to guard. And so, you know, it had just been getting worse and worse. And he did um, bite our walker a couple times. And so we've been really like paring down his visits, his walking visits and, you know, 
um, helped him get set up with a behaviorist and they've been doing, you know, really well with that. And I have seen like the past six months or more, like I've seen him just looking like he feels better in general, right? Like he just doesn't look so tense anymore. And, you know, and so, but we've gotten to the point where it's like only me and Carly can, can do the visits because we, we just can't continue to put the walker at risk. Right. Not that I want to put myself at risk either, but um, it's a liability thing for your employees. right, you know, and it's not yeah, and it's it. not fair to her. Um, and then the other part of that is it's not really fair to him, right? right? It's not fair to him. I don't want him to be in a situation where he feels stressed stressed out enough that he's going to lash out, right? And so, really, what Carly and I have been doing is just keeping it very low key. Um, you know, very short walks. If we walk, most of the time we don't, most of the time we'll just be in the house and we'll play with him and, and, you know, they have a nice yard. So we'll go out into the yard and he can do his business and then what have you. But he has always been super snuggly, like super snuggly. He's like a little, I don't know, cockapooey type thing, a little, (laughs) whatever, poo doodle poodle schnoodle type thing. Um, <laughs> One of the oods. <laughs> yeah, but he's so adorable and he is really such a great dog. Um, and he has always been super snuggly, right? And it's always just been like this one thing, like this resource guarding piece. But other than that, like he's, our visits are awesome. And yeah, so I showed up today and just like every other day, sat down on the couch with him. Um, you know, he came to snuggle up with me and I'm just petting him and he just launched at my face. Thankfully, I don't know how I like the flash got my arm up there, <laughs> but I I mean, literally just like launched himself at my face and got my hand, um, bit my hand several times. Um, I you know, got him to go into his crate so that we could create a little space. So, you know, that part of his behavior mod stuff is working. Like, you know, that what to do when this happens. Mm -hmm. And, And I do feel like it's been very few and far between that we've had issues and instances with him. So I do feel like he is getting better. However, however, This is right up Karen's alley because what I will say (laughs) is that I did bring it up a while ago that I think a big part of this and a big piece of this has to do with some sort of pain issue. He did end up, they did end up finding that he had a really bad back issue. Um, And so, you know, now I'm to the point where I'm like, I think those days that he kind of lashes out. And we're not outside on a walk. And he didn't grab a chicken bone because God forbid people (laughs) use trash cans and put trash in trash cans. Um, But, you know, when he hasn't gotten something and he still does that lashing out like he did today, um, I just have to go back to this is a pain issue. Mm -hmm. And so that was the conversation that we had today um, that, you know, it's again, the turn in the weather, it's gotten colder again. Mm -hmm. If you've got, you know, like even people with arthritis, you know, that like the weather is super, you know, related to how you feel. And so, you know, so I feel like, okay, he wasn't really guarding anything. I just think he was really in a lot of pain and Mm -hmm. that maybe because we've established this kind of routine of what to do when I come in, right? I come in, we sit down, I let him come to me, he gets his rubs and then we say, okay, do you want to go out? If he wants to go out for a walk, we go out for a walk. If not, we go to the backyard. Um, And so that's kind of been the norm. So my thought was that, okay, maybe now we're to the point where that, anticipation of this is what I'm supposed to do when she walks in the door kind of over maybe overrode that I'm not really feeling great today 
But every time you come in, I'm, uh, we do this. Yeah. And so, you know, it just, I don't know. I just really, it really hurts my heart, you know, to see a dog that uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, I mean, just with life, right? I mean, just with anything, like, you know, we, we often, when we talk about like behavior and stuff, um, you know, we, we talk about the outward presentation of that. Very rarely do we talk about what it's doing to the dog on the inside. You know, it's like, we want to fix the, the barking and the lunging, but it's like, what about the stress underneath? What about the fact that that can't possibly feel good? So what's going on on the inside? You know, like how, how is that dog feeling on the inside? Because there's, there's no being, there's no organism on this planet that wants to be stressed or miserable or, you know, defensive so it's like you you have to also think of that. And, you know, I was trying to express that to his guardian that, you know, don't – she feels horrible, obviously. Of course. Said, don't feel horrible for me. Like, yeah. I feel horrible for him that for whatever reason today, he felt that stressed or that in pain or whatever have you that he felt he had a lash out if he felt he had to defend himself. Um, and so I felt bad about that. And so that's, <sighs> that's where my head's at today. Joy. Such a relaxing, easy day. You've had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It well, was very relaxing. <laughs> it also just seems like there's so much, like, yeah, this is a really shitty thing and a really bad situation and a way to spend your day. But I think there's so many good things that, in a way, come out of this because it's, like, it's a good reminder that, you know, even us professionals, sometimes things happen to us. We get it wrong. Um, not that you necessarily got anything wrong here, but, like, it, it still happens to us. Our dogs are going to communicate how right. they need to communicate and there's nothing you could have done to fix or or prevent this from happen happening and i mean it does stink to to see our animals in pain and i think it kind of i was having a conversation with my last client before we got on here and they were talking about their last dog who was so 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 sick and you know they were just sitting outside trying to relax with him and you know just get him to enjoy the outside but a bird flew right by and the dog took off after it. And it's just like a good reminder that our dogs can be sick. They can be in pain. Right. And they're not always necessarily going to communicate that the way we humans think that they would. Right. And sometimes, unfortunately, how they communicate it is by biting our hand. Right. Yeah. And I think it it goes back to, to what you said about, you know, what could I have done differently? And I think that that's where that piece that we hear all the time, right? The dog, well, he just attacked me out of the blue. And it may feel like that in the moment. Like, yeah, absolutely. It felt like that. We were sitting yeah. there. We've done what we've always done for the past, I don't know how many visits. Um, nothing to me looked really different. So, yeah, it can seem like it's out of the blue, but it's not out of the blue for the dog. Right. And that's sometimes I think something that we miss is so, you know, so what could I have done differently? And, you know, that's always kind of, you know, kind of Monday morning quarterbacking it. But, yeah, I mean, I could have been a lot more... um I wouldn't say careful, but I mean, I could have done it a little differently. I could have sat on the other couch and, you know, maybe not engaged him right away um, and given a little bit more time to like see if like, okay, how is he feeling today? Um, so, I mean, there's always something that we can do. And yes, even us 
professionals, um, we're human. We miss things sometimes or we're because we're human and we're at the mercy of our emotions and our brain. Sometimes we are in our heads too much and we're not really as present as we need to be. And I can tell you that I'm sure that was probably a lot of it today too. I had this other stuff going on and I was, you know, thinking about other things. And was I really as present as I thought I was? Did I actually miss something that, you know, are those subtle things because it isn't out of the blue. And so, you know, it sucks. I feel horrible for him. Uh, I feel horrible for his his guardians. Um, but, you know, we just, we have to move forward. So we go back to, all right, let's talk to the behaviorist again. Let's, you know, get back into more intensive one-on-one trainings with him again. Let's call the vet and talk about that again. And it's just, you know, we move forward. We have to for him because he deserves it. So, well, and it's also very important to acknowledge that, like, it's it takes a very big person and a very emotionally aware person to say everything that you just did to say that, you know, th- like the whole Monday Monday morning morning baby, baby. words are hard <laughs> words words <laughs> words 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 no the whole Monday morning quarterback situation like yeah we we use that term and sometimes we make fun of it or whatever but it it takes a really strong person to go okay no what could I have done different it, because a lot of times I think people just go well what the what should the dog have done different right and that's not fair like you said we owe it to these dogs for them to not be in pain for us to be able to listen to them and, and it that does <laughs> unfortunately uncomfortably start with us changing the way we do things but I so I just I love that you have that mindset and I love that you help me remember that mindset too so (laughs) the dogs are lucky to have yeah oh thank you thank you (laughs) yeah I mean it's just it's sad it's sad um it is things like that I mean things like that feeling this way for the dog And for the guardians, that's for me, you know, in this season and season one, two, we talked about, you know, things like compassion fatigue and things like that and caregiver fatigue and burnout and things. And that piece of it right there is really the hardest piece of it for me. And it doesn't even matter that I'm not training anymore. It's just this level of empathy for anything that comes into my care. You know what I mean? I do. But, and like the other thing I want to acknowledge, and I understand why, but the, (laughs) but the thing that I haven't heard is that you feel bad for you, which like, and, and I, like I said, I understand that you're not like sitting here like, dwelling and moping I got bit and all that stuff but I think also you do sometimes especially when we're the professional in this situation we can push what happens to us away but I also think it's important that like you do acknowledge that unfortunately you got bit today and that sucks for you like that nobody nobody gets into this job and is like you know what I want to do (laughs) I want to get bit today. So I think right. you also have to give yourself that, that time because you're giving it to the dog, you're giving it to the clients and that's beautiful. But like, you also have to be kind to yourself too. And that's not saying that you're not, but I just want to remind you. No, I mean, that's a good point too, but I will counter that mm. with sometimes it's hard to do that because of absolutely imposter syndrome. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Well, if I was better at this, I wouldn't have gotten bitten. If I, you know what I mean? Yeah, because, no, I, I do. You know, so it's like that part too, I think, is a lot of times what prevents me personally from approaching it in that way is that now I feel, now I'm frustrated with myself. Yeah. That, I wouldn't say that I allowed this to happen, but 
yeah, that I allowed it to happen, right? Because I should be more professional and I should know what to do in 100% of circumstances all the time. <laughs> and, you know, whoo, here's yeah. my cape and I'm right. leaping tall buildings, you know, but that's not realistic. And it's hard to remember that sometimes because when we do, we also open that door for imposter syndrome too. Definitely. That's just me personally. So no, I completely I agree. And like I, I'm just going to give an example. I'm not trying to make this about myself because it's definitely about you. But I just remember like <laughs> I felt the way you're feeling when CJ, my own dog, bit me, and I like hit it. I never wanted right. to talk about it. I never wanted to acknowledge it because I'm a professional. This shouldn't happen. But once I started talking about it and like didn't try to hide it anymore some of that got lifted because we're, we are human. So I think it's a really good thing that you're sharing this story and you're willing to talk about it. Even if this never gets released, you know, like if you change your mind afterwards, I think it's just so good to, to have the conversation because it removes some of that stigma and hopefully for other people too. I do have a beverage. It was behind my microphone. I have water. Sorry. (laughs) That's on par for Karen. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so, I was just like, wait, what's that? Um, I think, going back to serious, I think, I just think it's important that you're talking about it and I'm glad you are. And I just want to remind you to be compassionate with yeah. yourself. And this doesn't make you less than in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I always like to tell people, and this. <laughs> isn't the best thing to say but I hope it kind of brings some levity to it um anytime somebody comes to me and says that they just got bit for the first time I was like congratulations um not that that could be the baseline but I f- I just hope that it like brings that levity to like right. this is a shitty situation but guess what dogs right. bite sometimes so right and I think too like what kind of like on par with what you're saying too is that it doesn't have to necessarily be getting bit but you know if you're a a trainer or a guardian and you're working with something with like, you know, reactivity, like you are going to have days where maybe you go backwards or, you know, maybe you do have a reaction and that doesn't always have to be a reflection of anything that you're doing wrong or, or anything like that. It's just that we are dealing with living beings. If I said I went to my client's house to let their alligator out to swim in the pool, nobody would bat an eye about (laughs) me getting bit. (laughs) Right? Um, (laughs) I wish we had a client with an alligator. I was just going to say, if you had a client, I'd be coming along with you. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be so cool. But I mean, you know what I mean? If, If it was, you know, if it was like, oh, I got scratched by a cat. Well, that's just cats. You know what I mean? Cats are evil. (laughs) So, so yeah, I mean, you know, I think this has a lot of different facets to it that, you know, applicable to both professionals and non-professionals is that we are dealing with living things and they aren't always a hundred percent and we aren't always a hundred percent. And sometimes shit happens. Um, That doesn't mean throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean that this guardian is like, okay, I'm getting rid of him or, you know, well, we'll just get a shock collar for him. But, you know, does it take some reflection on everybody's part? Sure. Does it take some going back and reevaluating and maybe having, you know, further discussions with the behaviorist and with the vet? Absolutely. Um, But things happen and I wish they didn't. But I mean, that's where we're at today and we can only move forward from there. You are spot on. And I think it kind of relates to a lot of what we talked about this season. That, you know, progress isn't always a straight line and everybody experiences things differently, but we all... I think the overall theme this season was we don't give up on our dogs. Right. I hope that's the theme for all of our seasons, but <laughs> certainly this one, it, it's about, you know, persevering, not giving up on these guys because we signed on for this. We're their advocates. And yeah, there's going to be shitty days. Nobody 
sets out hoping for a reactive dog, but we get the dog we're supposed to have, I think, and it's on us to be their advocates. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I, you know, even after this, I was still like, all right, come on, buddy, let's go out, go potty. You know what I mean? Because I think that, you know, like I said, I think he deserved that, um, that I wasn't just going to be like, F you and like, run away. (laughs) You know what I mean? But but yeah, I I mean, I think I also do want for anybody who is listening, though, to acknowledge that it is also okay if if you get bit by a dog and you need like (laughs) (laughs) you go do your thing if you need to pee in the house this one time i'm sure right right yeah Yeah. Um, please don't misunderstand that (laughs) (laughs) no but i i appreciate what you're saying that like you still you didn't let this one moment define this dog and your feelings towards him yeah no absolutely not like i i still you know he's still a great dog I still uh, love his little schnoodly, doodly, whatever, oodly face. Um, and he's still a good dog, regardless. Absolutely. So, so yeah. So that was that. That was my day today, Karen. That's a fun one. That's uh, let's not repeat mm-hmm. that tomorrow. Let's <laughs> not. Fun. Let's not. So I want to. Okay, only if you're comfortable with it, because I, <laughs> um, the the stuff that's happening on your Instagram the past couple days. <laughs> <laughs> Can we address that? <gasps> oh, it. I just yeah. <laughs> it has been. I don't have videos regularly go quote unquote viral right but every once in a while for those that don't know what's going on on my instagram by the time this comes out (laughs) i posted a simple sick okay all (laughs) so the reel that i posted today uh, responding to what's going on on my instagram i filmed it today and it the amount of times it took me to say six second video right. is embarrassing. So the number after five, <laughs> the video is six seconds long. And all it was, as I was telling people, if you have to take something from your dog, just trade them for it. So this way it doesn't become an issue. Right. There's no fighting. I'm, I also briefly in the comments talked about how to prevent resource guarding. Mm-hmm. Not an all-inclusive journey on this reel, okay? It oh. was we mean six little. seconds can't solve all of the, the dog guarding or resource guarding problems of the world? Surprisingly enough, no. I even <laughs> said in the caption, if you have a serious resource guarding problem, this needs to be addressed with the help of a professional. Right. Mm-hmm. But this is this is also on me. This is also on me. I assumed the general public would read the caption. <laughs> um I also didn't expect a hundred or yeah, 140,000 people to view it and have something to say about it, you know. Right. So everybody in the comments is just going on and on and on about, well, I teach my dog to leave it, or I teach my dog to drop it, or I just take things from my dog and they allow it because they're a good dog. And I, if anybody goes and like looks for this, I like to think the first few that came in, I was a respectful because normally Mm -hmm. I I choose kindness for the most part. And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's not really what I'm talking about, but I'm glad you found something that works for your dog. And I tried to be nice. And then they just kept coming. They right. just kept coming. I was like, cool story, bro. Cool. I get it. I get it. <laughs> That's like, my line. what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And it just, I. So, so there's so many things wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Right. So obviously you're putting out this little blip of a video. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like literally, like a blink of an eye video about, hey, here's something that you could do. And I love it, right? I love it because that's, it's such a big, it's such a small thing that can have big rewards, right? Is learning that your, or your dog or your puppy, great for puppies, learns that they can trade items. They don't have to guard them. They don't have to run away from you with them, that they can, if they have something, whether it's, you know, whatever, we're not talking about your dog getting into a bottle of antifreeze. Right. 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 (laughs) We're not talking about, okay. Okay. Chicken littles out there. We're not talking about your dog getting into a bag of rat poison. We're literally talking about just a general idea. You have a puppy, you have a dog you just adopted. Hey, let's work on trading things because there are going to be things that although aren't harmful, you still don't want to have. Exactly. We're not, we're not reinventing wheels here. Yeah. Oh, but we were in the comments. We were. We I mean, were. I I loved it. I loved it because that's what I did with Peter, right? Peter, when I first got Peter, I played the, what do you got? Oh, my God. What do you oh, got? Yeah. Right? Instead of him running away, he grabs something because that's what puppies do. And instead of him running away with it, my thing was, why don't we have him excitedly bring it to me? Exactly. And then I can give him something he can have. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. We're not talking like again, it's not rocket science. Yeah. Right? We're yeah. not we're not, you know. Yeah. Like we're not Einsteining yeah. this to death, right? It's just a simple concept. But the way that it got so misconstrued again, this teeny tiny little blip of a video how it got so misconstrued that if you do this, then you're clearly putting your dog in harm's way because you're not just taking things from them in an, in an emergency or what have you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, like deer legs got involved and one poisonous leaf got involved. I'm like, look, look, look. Yes. We are positive reinforcement. We are force free. But obviously, if my dog has a goddamn poisonous leave in his mouth and is going to ingest it, I'm not going to be like, oh, wait, let me get some treats. I'm going to go in after it. Like, and I'm going to solve the problem right. if that's possible. But it was, sorry, <laughs> <Correct me now. laughs> but it's like, <laughs> there are, and like, and the problem for me, why I ended up making a second reel responding to it was there were already, I don't know, 15 comments saying, mm-hmm. I teach my dog a leave it or a drop it. Right. And they just kept coming. Like people right. just kept saying it. And and I'm like, great, teach your dog these things. But the ones that really got under my skin was the ones that people were like, well, you need to teach your dog to give things up without trading because what if a kid comes over and tries to take something? Or, or yeah, or they should just do it just because because they, you should just be able to, to do it. Yeah. You should just be able to get in their face and take exactly. stuff from them. And I'm like, okay, first and foremost, children should never, regardless of how nice the dog is, be really left alone with a dog because it is not on the dog to manage itself in that situation. And it is also not fair for the kids to have to be in control when kids don't know better and you're just asking for trouble. Right. And also your dog shouldn't just like, look, yes, if they are perfect little robots and they're perfectly well trained and they've never had a bad day in their life. Yeah. They should be willing to give up everything, but they don't come pre-programmed with that software. You have to teach them to willingly give things up. And guess how you start teaching that? Like you said, you trade them. Right. (laughs) 
Like you mean, and like I commented on the second yeah. one. You mean you you can, like, you can use this to teach that? Yeah. Mind blown. Mind blown. Truly. Right. It's it's this I it's this idea. So first of all, it's it's that idea that you know dominance idea that my dog should do it just because my dog should do it, and it goes back to my story when we first started that your dog is a living, breathing being. I can't be like Karen. You should just do this because I tell you to do it. I mean, I could, but then you'd be like, okay, bye. Exactly. You know. So <laughs> this idea, yes. Like you said, if it's an emergency, right? It's like this whole idea that, oh, if we don't shock collar train our dogs for recall, that means we're just automatically letting our dogs play in traffic. (laughs) And there's no like, (laughs) there's no middle. There's no no middle to that, right? It's like, it's like, if you don't have a shock collar on, then your dog's getting hit by a, hit by a car. And it's like, there's no middle ground. If you aren't teaching, you know, a leave it in a drop it, or you aren't just rushing in and grabbing stuff from your dog. Or I saw one that was on there that was like, well, I'm, you know, my dog should be, um, should be okay with me taking his food. And I'm like, yeah, take, try to take my food. I will punch you in the throat. (laughs) I, I will. I mean, it depends on what it is, but I mean, yeah, I mean, like if it's like a salad, I'll be like, okay, cool, whatever. But like, if I've got like a good, I know you don't eat meat, but if I've got like a good cheeseburger in front of me and I'm start or chicken tendies, mm, don't, I will punch (laughs) you. But with your example, I just, the other day, literally yesterday, I had a dog come to my front yard. All of a sudden there's a dog. They live across the way. Oh, boy. Crossing that street, too, in front of your house? Mm -hmm. Highway. Yeah. I mean, it's not really a highway, but it's like a busy highway. Yeah, it's a highway. That dog had a shot collar on. Mm. And guess who was playing in traffic and almost got hit by a car? Oh, no. That can't be possible. No. (laughs) Never. We must have been in the upside down. (laughs) (laughs) But that's just the thing. Like, I was... It, I understand the the internet is the wild west and you, I, we put stuff out there and we have to assume people are going to comment on it, but it's just like, stop, read, think, does this add anything of value? Is this about what I just read? Right. And also like, could this apply to what I'm going to say and I don't need to say it? Right. Because, yeah, it's just been, it's been a wild, a wild it's just, Yeah, it's just crazy. It's like, it was something so simple, right? It shouldn't have been that, what's the word? Contentious. Is that the word? My brain's not working today. I think um, so. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, maybe if you do want to teach a leave it, or maybe if you're even that person that thinks you should just be able to grab your dog's bowl anytime whatever you do you buddy you do you but it's again it goes back to what you just said so what you're saying is there's no way there's no instance under the the sun where this might actually be helpful like this could work for something so basically and my biggest one of my biggest pet peeves is that false dichotomy right Yep. And I say it all the time. You will never win an argument if all you have is a false dichotomy. If it's my dog's shocked or my dog's playing, getting hit by a car. That's not, you can't win an argument like that. And so, you know, it's just kind of this idea where you made a very simple thing. And these people, Randy Randos, were just like, no, that's wrong. There's no way, you know, there's no instance and where I would do that with my dog and you know I would only do it this way and it's like okay well that's great but (laughs) so one of my favorites (laughs) let me see if I can can pull it up real quick (laughs) because by the end by the end like I'm like the people are still commenting right now and it's just like (laughs) I just I can't Mm -hmm. I can't make it up anymore but there was this one 
and <laughs> it just made me laugh because by the end I just started not caring. Like I, I was still like, I'm still trying to be nice about it. Like I'm not trying to be a complete right. bitch, but I was just like, no, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> so this person just commented, no, I just say out to, to it, a ball, marrow bone or sleeve. And so all I wrote back was no, see, I can say it too. <laughs> so I was like, okay, uh, you can no. You're awesome. Like, right. Why awesome. are you just saying no to my. Right. <laughs> and whatever oh. happened to, if you don't agree with it, just move exactly. on. I don't that's, understand. That's my social media experience. If I don't agree with something, I scroll past unless it is something so egregious that I know I couldn't have it like sitting on my conscience knowing I didn't say something about it. Right. But for the most part, I'm just like, you want to shock your dog? Okay, scroll. You want to put a choke chain on your... Okay, fine. Whatever. Um, I just don't understand why... They feel the need. Like, I'm right. not going to change my mind because you said no. Like, right. some random dude on the interwebs. Exactly. You know, and it's like, not even like, even like people that aren't following you. It's like, yeah. why do you care? You're right. Clearly, you're saying it can't ever work. So then why do you care? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm like, so I don't, I, don't ever go onto somebody else's page, no matter how atrocious. <laughs> We've all been there. They are. No. I might look at their page, but I don't ever comment on somebody else's stuff. I will comment on a comment they make on, like, your stuff or somebody else yeah. that I follow. If if you're dumb enough to make a comment <laughs> on one of these people that I follow, then I have I have – no feelings about responding to that comment. But I'm never going to seek out somebody's page and be like, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say, <laughs> no, you're wrong. <laughs> what well, I absolutely love when you get involved because you come with like facts and sources and all this stuff. And then people still like it just immediately goes over their head and they just yeah. still go like, no, you're wrong. And I'm like, well, <laughs> buckle up because she's got more sources and they're coming your way. So <laughs> sometimes I just like to lead with, uh, well, you must be fun at parties and right? let that sink in for a little bit, right? Like, yeah. I would not want to be your dog if that's how you talk right. to your dog. Exactly. You know you're I mean? just whatever, uh, dude. Uh, Sorry, you're miserable. It's been must a wild. Be. It's been yeah. a wild time on the old gram. <laughs> But surprisingly enough, I, I started, I don't know why, I don't know why, I started dabbling in TikTok. Oh, and, God. Uh, I was like, okay, well, people are always like, it's 10 times worse over there. Nobody's commented on it over there, you know? Mm. And I'm like, all right, well, they get it over here. Or maybe it just mm. hasn't been found yet, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say probably it's just hasn't crossed enough people's mm. things yet. However, however that works over there, the ticky talk and the ticky talk. I don't know. Yeah, For the most part, stuff. normally like I, I have started to not respond, but also it's like the engagement is good for the page. So <laughs> <laughs> that double-edged sword. Right. Exactly. <sighs> <sighs> so <laughs> we did it. We did another season. But- <laughs> We did it. Yeah, so let's actually get to why we're recording today. <laughs> we should probably go back and put a little blurb after our intro that, like, this is the season two wrap-up, and we're going to yes. get there. It's just going to take Eventually. us a while. <laughs> Eventually. So, tell me. So, what do you think? What, how, how do you think this went? How do you feel about it? What are your thoughts? Yada, yada, yada. I was trying to, like really think about that last night because I was like first and foremost my brain who did we have on this season and then I was like okay yeah no I remember I remember Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it was a lot of fun you know I feel like we covered 
a lot more topics. We also had our first male guest. Mm -hmm. So that was exciting. Um, And I feel like there were times where we really hit our groove. And then there was times where I was like, I could have been better. But again, that's life. That's humans, as we've been talking about. Um, So... I've enjoyed this one. I've enjoyed it. What about you? What are your thoughts, feelings, emotions? Tell me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I feel like this went by so quick. Yeah. Right. Like I feel like it, it just, we just flew through it. And I think that is because we were having a lot more fun with it and we were, you know, kind of just doing what we're doing now. And that's just talking and not really trying to make a podcast we're just talking and it becomes a podcast basically um and I do feel like that levity that we brought to it then also you know made it more fun and uh less I don't want to say daunting because that's not the right word but less um what's the word like clinical, like more like cold or yeah, for for the guests, right? Yeah, because you know I feel like that was a big change between last season and this season is we're just gonna we're just gonna do what we do and that's talk about stuff and you know whatever. And so I do feel like this season I feel like it flew by. I feel like we had some awesome guests, um, and I feel like after each episode I feel like they felt good about it. And so that was kind of really important to me. Completely agree. I loved that. I mean, I feel like we, I feel like it even kind of happened with like season one, but like, I always love when we get done recording and whether they reach out to you or me or whatever it may be, we always get that. That was so much more fun. Thank you for, you know, making that easy and enjoyable. I was really worried going in, but I had so much fun and like that, is the best feeling because right. it has to be kind of <laughs> intimidating. And I know we've talked about this before, like the idea of coming in and you're going to see this studio we record in, and then you're going to see us with our microphones and you're going to feel like some type of way about it. But it really is just friends having a conversation about dogs and things that we love. And I, <laughs> I love how invested people get in our icebreaker questions. (laughs) Like we hit some, we hit hard and people get anxious. They're like, I'm worried about those. So that is always just like so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So without like playing favorites, did you have a favorite episode? That's a hard one. Cause like a lot of, I had a lot of friends on this season. I simply loved Ken's energy like his I don't want to say chaotic energy because that like although it was a little that doesn't sound fair to him but like just his his energy was so much fun to to work with um I really liked um Holly's episode as well Mm -hmm. because again just I know how anxious she was about doing it and also I just loved that she was more open about the human side of the anxiety with dogs and I don't really feel like we've talked as openly about that necessarily um so I mean they were all good though but I would probably if I had to pick those two what about you do you have a favorite um I mean Again, I think all of our guests this, this season were amazing, um, equally amazing as the ones on season one. Um, but in terms of like, I feel like the episode I connected the most with um, would have to be um, Ashley Devine's yeah. episode. I just felt so... Um, I felt so seen, I yeah. guess, right? Like, this is somebody that gets 
the things that I had I had been feeling before too, doing, you know, having worked in shelters and stuff like that. And um, they had really good energy too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I just felt I just felt I really like on an emotional and personal level really connected with what they were saying in that episode. And I think that one was my favorite in that, in that respect. Yeah. I also really loved, um, like I said, and nobody can be mean. We loved all of you. Don't, don't be upset. We loved you all equally. (laughs) But I, I also really enjoyed having, um, Katrina and Jessica. Jessica. No, I was like, I think it's Jessica <laughs> and Jessica. <laughs> Cause I loved having the dynamic of another trainer with their client and hearing right. how they work together. Um, and then honestly, I was thinking about this on my walk with CJ today and forgive me again, the name is completely gone and this is no reflection on the humans. This is a reflection on me. Um, <laughs> Where we talked about shock collars. Oh, um, Ashley. Ashley Hyatt. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. And Bungie. Uh, yes, Bungie. Oh, God, my brain. Um, <laughs> but um, I loved that conversation because of how all three of us did it. You know, I feel like that's the way forward in conversations with people who take a slightly more balanced approach Um, and I, and I just hope that maybe we have more people on like that so that we can start to show people, like you were saying with like the comments on Instagram, like that it doesn't always have to be this all or nothing. Well, that's a bad example, but like, it's a, like, it's a, (laughs) we can have a dialogue. It doesn't have to be this attacking Mm -hmm. conversation. It is we can hear the other person. And I feel like that's a lot of what's missing lately in the industry. Um, So I I enjoyed that one as well. I did too. I felt like, again, personally for me, if I'm just thinking about how it affected me personally, like that one, I think took a lot of reflection on my part to, to come at it with a, a clean slate kind of Absolutely. and not bring and not bring that baggage into that conversation because I did want to hear her out and I wanted to give her that space to be able to talk about it without me bringing my preconceived and you know pre-lived experience baggage to her story and so that was um that was a, a good one for me too personally I think you did a really good job because it is It is a hard conversation regardless because you and I, we are very passionate about force free. Um, But like we've, like we've said, it's the only way we're going to move the industry forward is by having a conversation, not attacking those people who use those things. And, And I thought Ashley shared her perspective and her take and her reasonings on it so well and she was willing to have the conversation as well. And that and that's important. It goes both ways. And, right. and we were very lucky to have her be the, the voice of that because she was open to hearing from two people that are very, right. <laughs> very uh, passionate. But but you did you. I was very proud of you. Oh, and, um, thank you. That, that's a hard one. It is. Thank you. But they were all equally, you know, as amazing. So, like, you know, yeah, we had your sister. I know. That was was a crazy one, too. I, one day we'll have my sister on this. And it'll, well, then we'll, like, complete the family circle. Because I can only imagine (laughs) interviewing family and I'll get my taste of it. And, And, you know, we had Erica and Lauren and all kinds of good people we had mandy my dear friend Mm -hmm. uh so it was this is a good one i don't yeah it was it was good i I thoroughly enjoyed this season we're gonna have to start getting some more people if you want to be on send us a message so what do you hope for speaking of that what do you kind of hope for for next season 
So I was kind of thinking about this. I feel like, and maybe this is more of a conversation for behind the scenes, but we're recording and I'm not going to stop. Um, but I almost <laughs> kind of want to change. Like I want to keep the same format and have people on telling their stories and and learning from each other. But I also, I want more of me and you. So I was, you know, thinking oh. like a week with a guest, a week with you and me. And like, just because there's so much we can learn from guests but I also think even if it's short, just short little snippets or whatever, there's so much science and so much knowledge we can impart on people who want that side of it too, you know? So yeah. I, I want to continue to educate and share stories, but not just share the same stories over again and, and again everybody's stories is different so it's not always going to be that way but like i hope that makes sense i hope you understand what i mean yeah i think so i think so i think i got it cool i think i think so we'll find out maybe and i don't why, <laughs> and that's why i do this with you because when i say half a sentence or i can't spell something you can still figure out what i'm trying to say so <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i think I think, um, you know, I think at this stage where we are still really new to this and we're still trying to find that thing that works for us and that thing that helps us stand out and that thing that will give us more than one dedicated listener, um, <laughs> you know, I think it is going to be have to be a work in progress and we are going to have to try doing things. And I just, mm -hmm. it, the, it, the back of my mind and underneath it all, I just want us to have fun. Yes. And same. this season, I feel like we proved to ourselves because I feel like that was the missing piece last season. But I think we also proved to ourselves that even if the topic is heavy or even if the topic is charged and or, you know, what have you, that we can still have fun with each other Um and the guest and we can still have a a meaningful episode even if we're laughing about stupid things absolutely and i think you're spot on we had fun we're going to continue to have fun and i really think it's resonating with people more this season as we're having more fun and just showing our personality and I also love that like the people we've had on, not that, not that there's anything wrong with our season one guests because we were still, that was, that was our, <laughs> that was our train wheels, but still thank yeah. you for being on. Um, you know, I feel like our guests are also like more invested in it too. Like they're sharing it, they're excited about it. And so that always is helpful. And it's always nice to get that feedback from that we took from season one to season two of, mm -hmm. you know, be a little bit more fun with it and stuff like that. So we are listening. Any tips, yeah. any tricks, any advice, anything you want us to talk about, you know. If you want to be listening. on, if you want to be on, reach out. Um, we're starting to kind of put together lists for season three. I'm already excited about the people that we've contacted or that have contacted us. So um, that's great. But um, But yeah, I mean... I think I feel like my batteries just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the best possible way to end season two. Our batteries have fallen out. We look forward to seeing you in season three. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Keeping it real. We're keeping it real here, folks. So. So if Karen, if you don't have anything else, I'm going to take us home. Take us home. All right. So we well, can recharge our batteries. <laughs> well, with that, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And <laughs> please don't forget to give your dog a biscuit from us. Until next time. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> <laughs>